latest on Zimbabwe. Now we're joined now by Orson Moyo. He's with the MDCT in South Africa. It's very good to have you with us. Thank you very much, Jane. Uh, MTC Alliance. Yes, correct. Yeah. Tell us what happened with Tenda IBT. Uh, Tenda IBT was on a mission uh, to Zambia sent by the president of the Alliance. And fortunately, he was caught up at the border when the police tried to arrest him. But uh, he was uh, the, the, the citizens uh, of Zimbabwe. free to travel across Sadak, but uh, here he is not able to fulfill uh, the duties that he was uh, sent to. Okay, now we're going to be talking about this for a bit, so just to remind you that if you want to call in and ask Mr. Moyo any questions, please do go ahead. Now, the Human Rights Watch in South Africa uh, tweeted that he'd been granted bail, which the state did not oppose, the bail conditions to pay 5,000 and surrender passport and to stay at his given address and not to interfere with witnesses. Is this something that can be done and what do you make of the bail conditions? Uh, the fact that the state did not oppose bail is uh, because the president had uh, actually intervened to the president of Nangagwa. Yes, tell uh, us more about that intervention. What yeah, he, he had did. intervened and uh, this actually tells us uh, a lot because for the president to go on Twitter and break that uh, he is the one who intervened for a BT to be freed. It just shows the international community that uh, the Zimbabwean uh, judiciary is not uh, independent. I was going to ask you about that. I mean, if he's bragging on Twitter, what does it say about the other players involved? Has he lost control there? Uh, I think uh, he just says it as exactly as it is, uh, the way I take it. And uh, if the international community and the regional bodies cannot see that uh, uh, who is in charge of the courts, then I I'm not sure what else they are looking for. What does this say about opposition parties and the role in the country, your role in the country going forward? Uh, at the moment, we are busy. Uh, we are still within the seven-day limit for us to be able to appeal. And before that period is over, we'll be able to launch our appeal. All right. Uh, just going back to the president-elect, I mean, he boasted about getting involved in this. Did he get involved or was it the judge? I think... There's a little clarity there. Uh, taking it from the tweet, he is actually saying that he got involved, which means the judge received instruction and hence the state did not oppose bail. All right. So opposition parties, obviously you are waiting for the swearing in. I know that uh, you dispute the election results. Mm -hmm. What's going to be done if he is sworn in on Saturday? Where does it leave you? Uh, as soon as we file our papers, uh, according to the uh, Constitution, the con uh, court Constitution, uh, the swearing in ceremony uh, falls away. So uh, it becomes a non-event. What's a what sort of facts do you have? What confidence do you have in the matter, the fact that you are going to get this overturned? Oh, unless they will be having a celebration, uh, it's allowed to do that. But uh, if they are following the rule of law, uh, because uh, the, the President Mnangako has been preaching rule of law, peace, democracy, then they will have to obey the courts because uh, the court will have to pronounce that uh, the inauguration cannot carry on until the issue is resolved. And what about the international community here and acceptance of the results? What sort of pressures do you think that will put the president-elect under? Sorry? I'm just asking about the international community and how the results have been viewed by the mm -hmm. European Union as well and where this leaves. I think they, they put through their concerns. Uh, we saw the report of the EU uh, and others uh, for the pre-election uh, uh, events. But uh, there is a lot of uh, after-election events. Uh, there were six people that died at the uh, other end of a, a live uh, 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 guns. Uh, that the international community has said a lot, 
but they have encouraged the courts to remain independent so that uh, they can actually uh, follow the wishes of the people of Zimbabwe. Are you not just being bad losers here? Shouldn't you, for the sake of the country, admit defeat and move on? No, we're not bad losers. Uh, the PVR system is a system that is clear. When the results come in from the various polling stations, they come into a central place. And uh, there are forms that are pasted outside each and every uh, polling station. Uh, we had polling agents stationed uh, at the polling stations. And when the results were being posted out, they would send those results to our own uh, center and would uh, record those. Now, there needs to be a tally between the results that ZEC announces and what we have received from our polling agents. Besides that, there also needs to be a tally. Uh, that there were three elections that were going in this uh, harmonized election, the presidential, the provincial, and the local government. So each person was receiving a ballot paper, three ballot papers, and you are not allowed to vote outside. In South Africa, you call it a voting district. Hmm you had to vote uh, where you are registered. Otherwise, you would not be able to vote. So you wouldn't find someone who lives in Matabellan South, for instance, uh, being allowed to vote in Harare. They would have to go to their uh, voting district. So if you would receive three papers. So which means that from the three papers, you are not allowed to take any one paper home or leave another one behind. If you put it in blank, it becomes a spoiled vote. So there needs to be a tally between the three. Uh, but now you find that the presidential vote was tending to be inflated. In some cases... Okay, uh, so, sorry, I, I mean, I know there are very many, many disputes and I just don't want to go through all of them now. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, because I just want to get a few more questions out of you. So if the swearing-in goes ahead, which mm -hmm. it looks like it probably will do, what sort of role do you think the military is going to play Will there be protests on the streets? What are you saying to your followers? Uh, we have taken a legal route uh, to uh, challenge the results in a legal way. We will not be asking people to go on the streets. We will listen to uh, President Mnangagwa to uh, follow the peaceful route, the legal route, to challenge the elections. If the inauguration goes ahead, we cannot stop it. But uh, I think the courts will but have to are you concerned? I mean, we've seen violence in the lead up and during and after? I mean, uh, what's the reality here? We are not concerned. I don't think there will be any violence because uh, we have, we will be uh, submitting our, our, our grievances uh, to the court and uh, people will have to let that course uh, follow through until it's completed. Okay, let's bring in Tapiwe from Cape Town who's on the line. Go ahead, Tapiwe. Hi. Hi, go ahead. What's your question? All right. Um, I just want to ask to, um, I just want to ask to the comrade there, I'm also part of the party, as far as um, the indictments, if I can call them, on um, Tendai BT, we do not know the, the, the strength, why they are basing on him to be arrested. Yes, I understand and applaud the president for remo uh, for releasing him currently, but I do not know if it's not just a political move that has been done, because you should understand uh, these, these indictments on one of the top guys within the party, and there is um, the president, time is not on our side, I understand it's seven days before he's been by the chief justice appointed as the president, so how are those two parallelly treated? Is it a, a, a delay game, or things that we've known them for decades being done by them, or is something that the party is in control of. Okay, thanks, Tapiwe. What do you think? Uh, given that we are at, within the seven days uh, of uh, challenging the results, uh, events like these are actually happening so that they can scare us off. Uh, because uh, Tendai BT... It what is pretty is, scary, right? Yeah, it is pretty scary, uh, considering what happened in the aftermath of the 2008 election. Uh, this is really a scary situation. Uh, you, they say that uh, he un, un, un officially announced the results before they were announced by Zek. 
uh, to announce a result, you must say so and so got 1,000 votes, so and so got 200 votes. But uh, to say so and so has won the election, you are not announcing any result. If it does indeed go ahead, I'm just wondering what happens on Monday. What does well, what do the Zimbabweans living outside of Zimbabwe do? I mean, it's not clear if they're going to stay or leave. Uh, the Zimbabweans staying outside Zimbabwe have already been denied their right to vote because uh, even though the constitution now would permit them to vote where they are, uh, the millions of Zimbabweans outside the country were not allowed to vote. They had to travel into Zimbabwe to go and cast their votes. So uh, and Obviously that would have benefited the... ZANU PF party, people not being allowed to vote outside Zimbabwe? We are not sure. Uh, there is a lot of people outside the country who also support ZANU PF. So we okay. cannot guarantee that uh, they, all, they all belong to the MTS. We've got somebody on the line from Botswana. Fire, go ahead. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. How are you? Very good, thank you. What's your question, Fire? No, it's not a question, it's actually a comment. Well, go ahead. That yeah, directed to these guys, the, Mr. Chamisa and his friends. Look, we, uh, the community in Sadak, have been sympathetic with these guys in Zimbabwe and their situation. But I think now they are actually insulting all of us because they conduct an election, they bring their own party agents to each and every counting and polling station. And now they are coming back to say this election, they are not credible and saying all sorts of things. I believe they are stalling their own development in the country. Now they are busy causing noise. There have been wars in Zimbabwe, many souls were killed. But now Mr. Mnangakwa has tried his best with this man, Chiwenga, to even after extreme provocation, to withhold the violence, which we appreciate in the SATA community. But these guys in the, in the uh, position, it looks like they are not appreciating that to say Zimbabwe comes first. Let okay. them rebuild their country. Okay, but we got it, Fire. Trivial. I mean, Fire is correct that, you know, the alliance wasn't above board all the time, that they were also guilty of some violence. He's saying that you're being a spoiler and taking this badly and that it's not right for the country. Uh, if you try and tally results and they do not tally, you feel that you have been cheated. And uh, when you are cheated, you feel bad. So you have to voice your grievance. That's exactly what we are doing. So the development of the country is important, yes, but uh, it must happen under the will of the people of Zimbabwe. Enrico from Middleburg, go ahead. Okay, we've lost the line from Enrico, from Middleburg. So what happens now? I know that you're waiting on, on the legal process to kick in. What sort of support do you have from the international community? I mean, uh, Fire was saying that SADC doesn't support what's going on, but where do you look to now? Uh, now we look only to the legal system. We have uh, consulted widely. Uh, legal experts from around SADAC and uh, others and uh, they have given us the appropriate advice, we have uh, compiled uh, our notes, we have compiled our affidavit and heads and uh, we are ready to, to submit. As I am speaking to you, I am sure everything is being finalised. So uh, our only hope is in the courts now. All right. If the courts uh, don't uh, uh, become uh, tech sites, then okay. we have a problem. Let's see what Enrico has to say. We've got you back. Go ahead, Enrico. Good evening. How are you? Good, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, good evening. I would like to ask a question to the gentleman. Um, you guys, you say you have got overwhelming evidence about the rigging. So, I want you ask that when are you going to present that evidence to the Constitutional Court and what do you have for the Zimbabweans at large to know that you guys are taking this matter so serious so that we have got at least some hope? 
All right, thanks, Enrico. What sort of hope can you offer someone like Enrico? Uh, we cannot reveal what we have uh, before we go to court. We are filing our papers with the court, and uh, when the time comes, when the court calls us in, we'll provide the evidence. Can you give us a sense of the sort of impact this is having on people's emotions, how they feel about the situation, and obviously the knock-on effect of the economy? Yeah, yeah the people, I think, uh, at the moment, even though there's a lot of anxiety, they are being patient because uh, they know that there is a process that is being followed. Uh, the evidence that we have will be provided and we urge the people to remain calm and exercise restraint while this, uh, this process carries on. Uh, the economy uh, is in the hands of uh, the ruling party at the moment. Uh, even if they, the election can be rigged, but the economy cannot be rigged. It is up to their policies and what they have to offer Zimbabweans to pull that ahead because we're not interfering with that. Well, certainly intriguing to know what you're going to be presenting to the court and what the outcome is going to be. But very good to have you in the studio with us, Austin Moyer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Coming up, we talk to a young self-taught chef and food blogger who's baking, battering and basting her way through the culinary business. Funerals. When the time comes, and it will come, the last thing your family should have to worry about is money. Rest assured, all clientele funeral plans pay out within 24 hours. We even send 200 grand airtime when you claim. Clientele helped me to bury my loved ones with dignity. It's affordable. We have individual and family plans available. We pay out up to 100,000 rand per member. You can cover up to 13 people on one plan. Plans include grocery, transport, and unveiling benefits. If you choose our ultimate plan, we will pay all your premiums back. Yes, all your premiums paid back on top of 